salts has got to be one of the most controversial topics when it comes to nutrition. Now, fat and saturated fat and eggs, like those are those are pretty controversial too. But salt in its own, really, uh, the message and the science and the controversy really just continues to grow. Now, one thing that I've been big on is that I think our fear of salt is far overplayed for the majority of people, and we need to be clear about how salt interacts with potassium. And there's a new study that came out that really highlights this. So I want to re report this to you so you can understand for yourself whether salt's important and what other factors you need to consider for your blood pressure, your cardiovascular outcomes that may be unrelated to salt. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director of dietdoctor.com. And the study I want to talk about is called Sex Specific Associations Between Potassium Intake, Blood Pressure, and Cardiovascular Outcomes, the Epic Norfolk Study published in the European Heart Journal. Now, before we get started on the details of the study, um, here's the thing. We've sort of been inundated with information saying salt is bad because salt will raise your blood pressure, which will cause poor cardiovascular outcomes. But that simply is not true for the vast majority of the population. There are studies that show there's maybe 25% of the population is salt sensitive, where 75% of the population is not. There are observational studies like the PURE trial that show the people with the lowest amount of sodium actually had a higher mortality rate and the people who are sort of in the, in the middle to high ground of that four to seven grams um, kind of did the best uh, observational study, right? So the concept of needing to eat 1500 milligrams of sodium is absurd for the overall general population. Also, observational studies. Where do you get your sodium from? Are you getting it from a big bag of potato chips and, you know, desserts and processed foods? Or are you just adding some sodium to your fresh veggies and your meat and, you know, very different scenarios that a lot of these trials don't pick up. But here's the other thing, the importance of potassium. And that's something that's not talked about a lot, but I've done some videos on. So one take home for you is potassium is probably more important than sodium. Increasing potassium is more important than lowering sodium, I should say, because there is a definite association with higher potassium intake and lower blood pressure and lower cardiovascular outcomes. When you talk to, or when you talk about the old DASH studies, which is the this trial where sort of the salt restriction really became most popular. When you evaluate those in the highest salt sodium intake range who also had high potassium intake range, they did not have an increase in blood pressure. So I'm gonna say that again, those who ate the most sodium and the most potassium did not have a rise in blood pressure. So that's what this new study also shows, but it talks about it specifically for women. So one very clear finding in this study in women didn't matter how much salt you ate, as long as you were eating enough potassium, there was no influence on your blood pressure, no negative influence. In fact, the more potassium you ate, the lower your blood pressure became, right? So the importance of sodium in, uh, sorry, the importance of potassium intake kind of outweighed the sodium intake in this study. Now, again, it's an observational study, just data mining from food frequency questionnaires and you know healthy user bias and all those things we've talked about for these observational studies. But the report says it was not true for men. And this is what's kind of interesting. Because if you look at it, it kind of was true for men too. And the, before they started adjusting for a lot of different factors, there was a significant improvement in blood pressure um, for the highest amount of potassium intake. But then as you started adjusting for all the differences, which there were quite a few differences at baseline, that's when the, that started to, to fade away. So I think the interpretation is that we can't say much about men. We can't say it doesn't affect men in any way. We can't say potassium isn't important for men. The study just wasn't a good enough study to figure that out. But we can say there's a clear association for higher potassium being important for women um, in terms of lowering blood pressure and cardiovascular outcomes. But it doesn't mean it's not for men, right? And this is that concept of um, absence of proof is not proof of absence, right? That just because it wasn't shown to be true doesn't prove it's not true. And that's a, a kind of a tricky concept in, in interpreting these studies that not everybody understands. Me, myself, I fall into that trap as well that I don't, I'll frequently say, oh, this showed that there's no difference. Well, no. I mean, it showed that there wasn't a difference, but does not prove that there is no difference. And especially when you're talking about a low quality study like this. So what's the take home? Well, the take home is, 
Most people don't have to worry so much about salt. How do you know if you do? Well, if you eat higher salt and you feel bloated and you feel swollen and you're gaining weight or you see that your ankles are swelling or your hands are swelling, that's a sign that salt causes you to retain fluid. The other thing is if your blood pressure is going up, you can easily measure your blood pressure, start increasing your salt intake and see if it makes a difference. Another important point though, like I mentioned, where are you getting your salt from? As long as you're eating a whole foods, low carb or high satiety diet that isn't you know doesn't include highly processed ultra processed foods you're adding salt to that whole foods low processed foods diet chances are that's going to be very different than than the alternative and what's good about that is if you're eating plenty of fibrous veggies and getting some of your fat from avocados those are high potassium sources meat's got potassium too so those are great potassium sources where you're naturally going to be increasing your potassium so according to these studies the sodium's likely going to have much less of an impact for you Okay. So those are some tips, hopefully that you can kind of internalize to try and figure out, are you, do you need to worry about sodium? All this talk about sodium and salt and restriction. Um, again, for most people, it doesn't matter, but it's important to know if it does matter to you because then it could have an impact on your health, but make sure you're eating adequate potassium. And if you're not eating high potassium foods, you can take potassium supplements. Just make sure you have normal kidney function before doing that. Talk to your physician if there's any concern there. Um, but those are some important concepts. We got to get away from this salt is bad end of story because it's simply not true. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you here next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Take care.